Microbiology and Immunology. She's also the Assistant Dean of Academic Strategy at uh, NUS Medicine and the Director of the Immunology Translational Research Program. Uh, Veronique uh, obtained her PhD in France and did her postdoc in Mount Sinai School of Medicine in the US before joining NUS. Her research interest is in the biology and functions of lymphatic system. And today she'll be sharing with us about breakthrough, her breakthrough discovery of novel macrophage population through lymphatic research. Without further ado, let us welcome um, Professor Veronique Angeli. Thank you, Caroline, for the kind introduction. Uh, let me uh, share my screen. Okay, can you see the slides? Yes. The, the, the slides are good. Okay, great, great. Okay, no, just to <laughs> prefer to check. Uh, so it's it's a really a great pleasure uh, to uh, showcase some of the research in uh, in my lab, uh, and so I, I will show you indeed um, the discovery of this novel population of macrophage that you can see here, these green cells, uh, through the lymphatic uh, research. But before that, I just like to uh, uh, talk about my my journey as a as a scientist. And uh, so all uh, started uh, in France, uh, where I did my PhD uh, in Pasteur Institute in Lille. Uh, and at the time, I was fascinated about uh, host pathogen interaction. And so I work on uh, a parasitic disease uh, um, uh, with Schistosoma monsoni and uh, how this parasite can escape the immune uh, response, and particularly how this parasite can uh, modulate the migration of uh, these antigen-presenting cells called dendritic cells. And uh, so in 2002, with uh, interest in dendritic cell uh, migration, uh, I moved to the state, to New York City, at the uh, ICANN School of Medicine, uh, School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, where I continue working on uh, dendritic cell migration, but in a very different context, uh, since I work on uh, cardiovascular disease and particularly uh, atherosclerosis. And then uh, after four years uh, uh, as a postdoctoral fellow, uh, I decided to uh, move uh, to Singapore where I established uh, my own lab as an assistant uh, professor. And there I continue uh, working um, like uh, on a cardiovascular disease. And also during my postdoc, I uh, start to be very interested about the lymphatic uh, vessel uh, system. So I'm going to describe uh, a little bit on our main research in the lab. And uh, indeed we, we have a strong interest in this lymphatic vessel system. So let me uh, mention or briefly introduce uh, what are the lymphatic, uh, what is the lymphatic vessel system? So it's basically uh, composed of lymphatic uh, vessels, uh, lymph and lymph nodes. So in the peripheral tissue, you have an extensive network of lymphatic vessels that will drain fluid, macromolecules, cells uh, into larger uh, vessels, also called the collecting lymphatic vessels. And uh, basically these uh, fluid cells will be then drained uh, through uh, lymph nodes and then uh, going back to the blood uh, circulation. So the lymphatic vessels were mainly known for their function in maintaining uh, a fluid homeostasis, but uh, we know that they are also important in lipid transport and particularly uh, in, uh, to support an immune response by, for example, uh, controlling the trafficking of immune cells or uh, antigen, for example. And uh, lately also there are evidence that the lymphatic uh, vessels are really important in resolution of inflammation. And indeed, uh, my lab uh, uh, contribute to uh, this uh, uh, better knowledge uh, on lymphatic vessels in immunity and inflammation. For example, we show that lymphatic vessels are important to deliver these antigen-presenting cells in the lymph node. Uh, we show also during inflammation that the expansion or the growth of lymphatics in the lymph node shown here uh, in green is important to control cells uh, migration into this activated leaf node or out of this activated leaf node. And also uh, we uh, have some evidence that 
the growth of lymphatic vessels, uh, which happen, for example, during inflammation, can be uh, 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 driven by uh, immune cells such as uh, neutrophil. And we were, uh, we are also very um, fascinated by uh, a crosstalk between lymphatic vessels and uh, cholesterol. So indeed, um, in 209, like we demonstrate that an environment which is rich in cholesterol can impact the uh, lymphatic vessel uh, structure uh, and also function. So we show that, for example, in a mouse model that develop high level of cholesterol, like uh, these EPOE deficient mice, um, this leads to uh, uh, less drainage uh, of macromolecule through the lymphatic vessels. So really showing that high level of cholesterol can have a negative impact on lymphatic uh, drainage. And uh, in, conversely, what we show is that lymphatic vessels are very important to drain cholesterol. And uh, particularly, so uh, when we have obstruction or lymphatic insufficiency, what we observe is uh, accumulation of cholesterol uh, within the peripheral tissue. So really showing that the lymphatics are important to maintain cholesterol level in your peripheral tissue by draining this uh, uh, excess of cholesterol from the lymphatics back in the circulation for further uh, excretion, for example, via the uh, feces or reabsorption by the intestine. So really showing that uh, like this importance of this cholesterol and lymphatic uh, vessel crosstalk. But this work led to even more uh, question, which remain to be uh, answered. And uh, for example, having shown that lymphatics is very important uh, for the transport of cholesterol, um, it could be it, important to uh, address the role of lymphatic drainage in atherosclerosis. You probably know atherosclerosis, and it was mentioned by uh, Marcus um, just before me, that atherosclerosis, uh, it's this cardiovascular disease um, characterized by the deposition of lipids in, in part like cholesterol in the arteries forming this uh, atherosclerotic uh, plaque. Uh, so it would be in, uh, interesting to know the importance of this lymphatic drainage in atherosclerosis. And also, I think, uh, you know, all the observations I mentioned earlier were in mouse model, but what about in humans? Is there any condition of lymphatic insufficiency in humans that are associated with cholesterol uh, deposition? So we address uh, recently this question. And the first one uh, to uh, uh, investigate the role of lymphatic vessels in atherosclerosis, we use uh, a mouse uh, a model and uh, which develop uh, atherosclerosis and we study uh, lymphatic drainage in these mice. And what we found is that, so this is a cross section of uh, the aorta, lymphatic vessels are uh, sitting outside in this outer layer called the adventitial layer. Here is your lumen of your vessels. You have the intima, which is the inner layer of the arteries, and then the media uh, layer. So the lymphatics uh, are present in a healthy uh, artery in the adventitial layer. And what we found is that during atherosclerosis, these uh, lymphatic uh, vessels uh, change uh, uh, their morphology and in fact uh, um, have an impaired lymphatic uh, 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 drainage. So they uh, lose their function, their capacity to drain a molecule uh, into the draining lymph node. And we found uh, by using different surgical uh, model showing that in fact, if we obstruct uh, lymphatic vessels in a mouse which doesn't have yet atherosclerosis, we can promote the formation of this atherosclerotic pack uh, in within the uh, intima layer. So really showing that uh, lymphatic drainage is uh, important to prevent the development of uh, atherosclerosis. So as I mentioned, uh, we were also uh, uh, like uh, interested to know whether uh, in humans uh, there is also this uh, association between lymphatic insufficiency or poor lymphatic drainage and cholesterol deposition. So we decided to study a patient with secondary lymphedema. What is lymphedema? Lymphedema, secondary lymphedema is a condition, a chronic and debilitating disease, as you can see here, which is characterized by the deposition 
a retention of fluid in limbs, either a lower or upper limb. Um, and this is because of uh, lymphatic insufficiency uh, resulting from uh, post-cancer treatment, uh, for example, radiotherapy or uh, uh, injury. And so we uh, study um, like a, a biopsy from these patients at different stages. Um, and what we uh, found is that early on at stage two, we can already see a, a significant accumulation of uh, free cholesterol or the toxic cholesterol within this tissue. And later on, we show that cells can basically pick up these uh, lipids and cholesterol and become these lipid laden cells or foam cells. And in fact, these foam cells are characteristic of uh, atherosclerosis. And uh, we show that these happen, uh, basically these foam cells uh, are observed in later uh, stage of uh, the disease. So really suggesting that lymphatic insufficiency leads uh, in humans uh, to cholesterol deposition. And in fact, uh, we have more evidence that this cholesterol deposition is really uh, like an important a trigger of the pathogenesis of uh, lymphedema. And uh, we, uh, in fact, now are developing drug uh, to target cholesterol um, and as a way of uh, treating lymphedema, which, you know, uh, so far there is no cure for lymphedema. Um, so this is uh, where we are for, for this uh, uh, research on uh, the crosstalk between lymphatics and uh, uh, cholesterol. And um, maybe I'm, I will uh, skip this. So um, I was mentioning that uh, I wanted to share uh, this breakthrough discovery about macrophage for our lymphatic research. So you may wonder how from lymphatic research uh, they uh, uh, discover this population of macrophage. So when we uh, uh, look at lymphatic vessels and we stain, for example, for lymphatic vessels in uh, whole mount uh, skin, uh, uh, tissue whole mount, for example, in the skin or intestine, we use this specific marker of uh, lymphatic vessels called live one, which is the lymphatic vessel endothelial acid receptor. As the name stands, it's a receptor for hyaluronic uh, acid. And you can see that with this staining, we can nicely see this network of uh, vessels. However, uh, when I did, at the time I was still a postdoc, um, did some staining with live one uh, in intestine, I could see also uh, some other cells than lymphatics positive uh, expressing this uh, live one. And in fact, when uh, back then in, in Singapore, in my lab, one day my PhD student came and see, show me a similar uh, picture where she can definitely see also other cells that were not lymphatics positive for this uh, live one uh, marker. So we decided to uh, understand what are these cells, identify them, characterize them uh, further. And there were in the literature some evidence that indeed uh, macrophage in certain tissue could also express this uh, live one, for example, in cornea or in tumor and so forth. However, uh, the, the specific distribution of this macrophage was not known, as well as their uh, function. So we did that, decided to do further characterization. And indeed, uh, according, uh, um, uh, as shown in this paper, we uh, uh, show that these live ones, uh, positive cells, were uh, macrophages. But what we found uh, uh, interestingly is that these uh, cells, these live one uh, macrophages, were specifically a lining uh, structure, and we found that these structures were in fact uh, blood vessels, as shown here in, in red. So they line the outer layer of the blood vessels. But interestingly, we show that these live one positive macrophages don't line uh, any uh, kind of vessels. As you probably know, you have three types of vessels like capillaries, veins, and then arteries. They only line uh, blood vessels that are covered by smooth muscle cells, these uh, 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 stained by smooth muscle uh, actin, but not the smaller vessels, which are the capillaries. And we uh, further show that 
um, uh, these macrophage line blood vessels, not only in mouse skin, but also in the mouse uh, brain as shown here, or uh, vessels in the adipose tissue. And of course, we show that this was relevant for human, uh, as we also show in human skin uh, that live on positive macrophage can line the uh, blood uh, vessels. Um, and we also show that in a human umbilical cord, because uh, in a umbilical cord, you have these beautiful uh, two arteries and then, and we show that indeed these live on positive macrophages were also lining these uh, blood vessels. And in human uh, artery, um, when we look at uh, some sections, we found them uh, particularly in the adventitia layer, so this outer uh, uh, layer of uh, the artery. So uh, we decided uh, to, uh, for further characterization, to uh, focus on the mouse uh, aorta, which is the largest uh, blood vessels uh, in these uh, animal. And by uh, flow cytometry, uh, we further characterize uh, these cells and we show that in fact, they are uh, the most abundant uh, macrophage uh, and particularly in the adventitia uh, layer. Um, and also by further marker, we show that uh, um, like there is an equal proportion of live one positive macrophage that express also this marker, the uh, uh, major histocompletic complex uh, two. So, um, then we, of course, uh, we wanted to know what might be the function of uh, these uh, live one positive uh, macrophages and how to study that. We uh, generated a mouse model that basically specifically lack uh, these live one positive uh, macrophages. And you can see when we look at uh, aorta from these uh, uh, like normal mice or mice that lack these live one positive macrophages, uh, you can see a significant re reduction in these uh, number of live one positive macrophages, regardless uh, the MHC2 uh, uh, expression. However, in this mouse model, uh, it was important to verify that the overpopulation of macrophage which lack uh, live one. So the live one negative population is not affected in the mouse. So showing that we have a specific way to deplete these live one positive uh, macrophages. So with that, we went on to address what uh, could be the function of these live one positive macrophages. And what we observe is that the depletion of these aortic resident live one positive macrophages leads to arterial wall uh, uh, remodeling. So we saw that um, the luminal diameter of these vessels become uh, 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 inc like increase, as well as we see an increase in the adventitia uh, uh, area. And uh, also, uh, we found that the loss of these live one positive macrophages was particularly associated with the accumulation of uh, collagen within the arterial wall, whether it's the adventitia layer or in the uh, media layer. And this is uh, shown here by this uh, 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 quantitative uh, analysis. So really showing that these live one positive macrophages affect uh, the structure of uh, the mouse uh, aorta in the steady state, so in absence of any inflammations and so forth. So we, because the collagen uh, is very important uh, for uh, the biomechanical properties of the aorta and its function, we went on uh, to do some uh, biomechanical testing in this mouse aorta from normal mice versus those that were lacking, uh, that lack live on positive macrophages. And what we observe is that uh, these uh, live one positive macrophages are important to prevent arterial stiffening, like basically to prevent the artery to become uh, stiff. I won't have time to, to uh, uh, show you all the data, but basically what uh, we found is that, uh, so uh, that these live one positive uh, macrophages indeed prevent uh, arterial uh, stiffening and how they control this collagen deposition is by basically affecting uh, the production of smooth muscle, uh, um, collagen by uh, smooth muscle cells. And we show that this uh, is dependent on uh, the interaction between these live one positive macrophages 
and the uh, move, smooth muscle cells and the expression of MMP9, the metalloproteinase, uh, which basically degrade collagen um, uh, uh, enzyme produced by the live one positive uh, macrophages. So now we are, uh, of course, like having shown that these live one positive macrophages are important uh, to uh, prevent arterial stiffening uh, in steady state. We uh, hypothesize that these uh, live one positive macrophages might be uh, uh, um, like uh, involved or in, uh, in arterial diseases. And so we have ongoing studies, um, this by a PhD and postdoc in the lab on uh, looking at the role of this macrophage in another uh, arterial disease called aneurysm, which is characterized by the dilation of uh, the aorta, vascular aging, which in fact, arterial stiffening is a hallmark of vascular uh, aging and also atherosclerosis, which I mentioned uh, earlier. But we know that these live one positive macrophages are not only in the vasculature, they are also in other uh, tissues, and we are exploring their role in uh, skin homeostasy, lung homeostasy, and disease such as uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and asthma, and also uh, gestational uh, diabetes. So uh, with that, I'd like, of course, to thank uh, all the uh, past and present members of, of uh, my lab. Um, and uh, as you can see, we can work hard, but also play hard. Uh, all our collaborators from Singapore and overseas, and then, of course, the funding uh, uh, agencies. And we'd like to just to finish by uh, saying that if you are interested uh, in immunology uh, uh, research and you are looking for a vibrant, nurturing and uh, collegial environment for your graduate studies, uh, please uh, join us. Um, so the Immunology Translational Research Program, uh, which, uh, you know, our main objective is really to transform medicine for immunological research. So who we are, we are a, a, a multidisciplinary group of immunologists and clinicians, uh, mainly from NUHS. Uh, we have state-of-the-art uh, uh, technology platforms, such like flow cytometry, histology, bioinformatic. Um, so indeed, if you are interested to know better uh, on the role of immune system in health and, and disease, its regulation, or uh, bring discovery from bench to bedside, uh, to treat and diagnose uh, uh, like a disease such as cancer, autoimmune uh, disease, respiratory, please contact us. Um, I think uh, just like one key message, I think finding the right lab, uh, knowing uh, what kind of environment you're looking for, uh, like what type of supervision you are looking for is really uh, uh, important. Thank you very much for your kind uh, uh, attention and I would be happy uh, to address any question. Thank you.